Grand Finals here, Grand Finals there, and roster updates pretty much everywhere. Let's get into it. Hey folks, my name is Apostle, and welcome back to Watching Overwatch, also known as WoW. As we all know, Overwatch esports can be hard to follow sometimes, so this is the scuffed but quick way to find out what's going on in the scene. And oh boy, do we have a lot to cover this week. Now before I start bringing stuff down, I'm going to give you some spoiler-free must-watch matches. These were some great games that I would definitely recommend you go and watch right now before I break them down later in the video. First, we have Space Station Gaming versus Virtus Pro in the EU Upper Semis. This was an amazing back and forth that really went the distance. I would absolutely recommend you go see it. Honestly, it might even have been better than the actual Grand Finals. Speaking of Grand Finals, we also have TSM versus Timeless in the NA Grand Finals. Another really, really great match. And finally, YFP Super Shy versus Nightmare Timeless in Calling Out Heroes. You could go watch the Grand Finals or the Upper Semis for this. Both these games were absolute cinema. These teams are so evenly matched, they made for some great games. Anyway, let's start breaking stuff down now. And keep Keep in mind, this is where the spoilers start. First off, we're going to talk about the Face It Masters playoffs. We had EU and NA going on. We're going to start with EU, though. Our upper bracket quarterfinals saw some pretty interesting stuff starting right off the bat. Super Shy actually ended up forfeiting, so we didn't really get to see them participate much this time around. But something interesting is a team called Washington Hospice. This team was actually made up of the former members of Gaming Gladiators, and they took a clean 3-0 over Ex Oblivion. So even under a new name, these guys are still raring to go. Space Station took a clean 3-0 over Nuage as well, but Virtus Pro actually played a really close game against a one-man army. Now VP was able to come out on top with a 3-2 in that game, and it was really a lot of the Kanael Ana clutching up. But you really gotta give props to Ioma for being able to show their strength here. Top Dragon has been such a huge asset to this team, you can really tell that they're trying to punch their way into that upper echelon. In the upper bracket semifinals, we had Ents versus Washington Hospice. This was actually co-streamed by Commander X, so if you're subbed to him, you can definitely go check this out. This was actually a close match from what I could tell. Benvest was actually on support playing Brig, supposedly looking even better than FD God did, so that's pretty cool. Now, they did end up losing the match to Ents and went into the lower bracket where they ended up forfeiting against a one-man army. So we don't really count that game and we can say they went out on a high note. Now, SSG versus VP in the upper semis. This is the game I was talking about. SSG won this game in a rare map six, actually. This game was just each team winning their respective map picks, except for King's Row, which actually ended up being a draw. Backbone is back on the May, and he's looking amazing as normal. But something interesting that we saw throughout this bracket is Virtus Pro were actually playing Sauna on Ash, which brings up the question of where is Shockwave? Sauna is super flexible to be sure, but with the amount of Ash they'd be playing, you'd think you wanna have Shockwave in for that hit scan prowess. But seriously, this game was super close. In the final fight on Nepal, Sana was 96% to Bob, trying to come up to the point where Backbone just turns around, takes him out with a quick icicle headshot. If Sana had gotten that Bob, who knows what we might have seen. But still, the fact that we actually got a draw in this day and age has actually become a pretty rare thing, so absolute banger match. Moving on, we had Space Station Gaming versus Ents in the upper final. This was another really great match. Both these teams going at it went to map 5 before Ents were just barely able to take the win. Honestly, a lot of it came down to the map 5 of Junkertown, where we had to win it'll do Kai versus Sparker. These two guys are both probably the best hit scans in EU. Uh, what was kind of interesting to see was Kai was actually ignoring Sparker a little bit when it came to the Widow duels. I don't know if this is a sign of respect or if it's just disrespect. Maybe he doesn't consider Sparker a real challenge, but at the end of the day, Ents were able to take that win and knock SSG down into the lower bracket. But from their space station, they kind of heated up. They took out Virtus Pro in a quick 3-1 and then moved on to the grand final where we saw the rematch against Ents. Now, SSG, they actually managed to win this game in a 4-1. And this is actually even more dominant than you might think. Ents actually started up one map due to the face at rule set. So SSG, they won four maps in a row, making it a clean sweep. It kind of seems like Ents might be the crazy raccoons of EU. With the carry roles that Kevster and Kai are known for being nerfed a little bit, it relies a lot more on these hive mind compositions, which is just what SSG excel at. You have the funny Astro Juno looking great, Landon Brig is holding up really well, and then Hadi and Backbone on their comfort heroes playing their comfort comps. These guys on Brawl just look unstoppable. It's hard to imagine how they ever ended up losing in the first place. With SSG back on top in EU, let's move over to NA now. There were two teams here that were a step above the rest, and that was TSM and Timeless. But despite how ahead they may be, we have a few teams that are all battling it out in the tier below. Citrus, Team Z, and Fluffy Dreamland all had great matches against each other, both in the upper brackets and the lower brackets. These guys were trading maps back and forth, and they're making for some really entertaining matches. It should be to be expected as we've seen the talent that these guys have on their teams, but it's really nice to see just how competitive NA can be even when you look below those upper teams. Now in the grand finals, we actually had a really cool storyline going on. 
on. Timeless were dominating in the regular season, right? Coming into playoffs, their only loss was to TSM. And then they actually ended up losing to TSM in the upper final there. So then they got sent down into the lower bracket where they beat Fluffy Gamers to be able to come back into the grand final. And of course, TSM are already up one map and then they win the next two. So now Timeless is down to TSM zero and three. So they call up Lethal, who hasn't been subbed in at all for this map yet. Lethal is actually out on a grocery run. This is said by the man himself. They call him in. He comes completely cold and actually starts a reverse sweep. He wins the next four maps in a row, making one of the craziest comeback victories I've ever seen and leading Timeless to their first face at championship. I gotta say, I feel kind of bad for Vision because it's gotta be tough not being able to win a single map and then seeing Lethal come in and just put down work. But I don't think it's a slight against Vision that this happened it's more so just a testament to how insane lethal is like this guy is just cracked and it's probably only a matter of time before he gets scouted by one of the top teams if he's not on a top team already now that wraps up face it so let's go over to OWCS Asia in the Japan playoffs we saw Lazuli versus Niam gaming and Lazuli were able to win this four to one they cleared pretty easily I'm not gonna lie Niam did win push with a full cap but a lot of this was due to Lazuli kind of playing their bench players they had God Sam CC2 and Kiru and then they played a weird Hanzo Tracer comp which just didn't really work out. Outside of that though, Zuli just looked a step ahead. They were very flexible. Like I mentioned last week, their flexibility seems to be a really strong point for them. Navis was on May basically the whole match, though he did pull out a pocket cast on Flashpoint, but him staying stable allowed Leonopteryx and Hidden to really showcase their flexibility. Leonopteryx is looking like one of the best Junker Queen players I've ever seen. And not only that, he's also insanely flexible. He's pulling out really good Winston gameplay, really good Ramatra gameplay. He is really an up and comer when it comes to the tank role. And and then Hidden, this guy was kind of going crazy with his hero picks. He was practically playing mystery heroes. To give you a quick rundown, he played Torb, Hanzo, Widow, Symmetra, Tracer, Junkrat, and Ash all in the same series. Like, that's kind of crazy. And he looked really good on all of them. So Lazuli, if they stick with this roster, I think you got to start investing in them. Their stocks are going up. Then in the Korea playoffs, we had Zeta Division versus Falcons, and we were all super excited to see this match, but it was actually a lot less close than we were thinking as Falcons took that win with a 4-1. Playoff Falcons, they kind of just seem like they're on another level. The match was kind of a stomp other than Circuit Royale. We saw Zeta attempting a bit of a Sombra May comp, which actually did work on Circuit. And apparently they got this from some streamer team that they ended up scrimming. But outside of Circuit, the Sombra just wasn't getting that much value. On a later map, Violet was trying the Iliari, but it seemed like a bad choice. Falcons with proper on the Ash, they just seem unstoppable. And Stalker is probably the best man in Korea. What's interesting though, is in the post-match interview, Stalker has actually said he hates playing this meta. So the fact that he's performing this good on a meta that he dislikes so much is kind of crazy. But I think the real shout out here has to be for Hanbin. Like Hanbin is just solidifying his place as potentially the GOAT tank. The way he knows his limits, his ability to set the pace, and the way he can just stay alive and give his healers freedom to do what they want is just so incredible. It'd be easy to point out a tank that can just solo carry games, but Hanbin can solo carry in a way that enables the rest of his team, and I think that's just insane. So yeah, Falcons cleaned house, Hanbin had his way with your team. Zeta, despite being the pioneers of the Juno comp, weren't able to pull it together in the end. Now onto our next tournament, let's talk about calling all heroes. Nightmare, YFP, and Bubble Blowers were the top teams as expected. We saw in the upper bracket quarterfinals, all of them were taking clean 3-0s against their opponents, except for Bubble Blowers, who actually had a 3-2 against their opponents of Fluffy Mafia. Fluffy Mafia coming in as kind of an unexpected challenger, they had a really strong performance here. Bubble Blowers were ultimately sent into the lower bracket by YFP Super Shy, where they were eliminated by Fluffy Mafia in a 3-1. So Fluffy able to learn from that initial loss they took to Bubble Blowers and come back in a really strong manner and show that you can't sleep on them. I think the real storyline for this tournament though was in YFP versus Nightmare. These teams met twice in the bracket and each game was absolutely insane to watch. YFP first beat Nightmare in the upper bracket final, sent them down to the lower, where Nightmare just barely found the win against Fluffy Mafia in a close map 5, but then they rematched in the grand final. And YFP, they were able to find the win against Nightmare Timeless in an amazing 4-2. This wasn't so much a comp diff or anything like that as it was just these players showing the insane level of quality they have. Zoe was looking incredible on the flex DPS, and we saw amazing battles between Peace and HK. These are two flex DPS players that go way back in the scene. And also, even the hit scan between Wisps and Senna, we saw some amazing Widow duels as well, and shout out to Bun, who might have been the best May in the tournament. A big thing to take away though is 
Timeless getting rid of Scuffed may not have been the play as Scuffed was on that Timeless Ethereal roster that kind of became Nightmare Timeless, and they were a huge part of why YFP Super Shy were able to find the wins they did. And of course Hitori, like we talked about, just an absolutely massive pickup. The experience that they have on tank really came through and it showed here. This is a player that isn't just one of the best in Calling All Heroes, but may just be one of the best tank prospects in general. Anyway, that wraps up Calling All Heroes for now, but I gotta say this tournament was amazing. So many close games here, I would definitely recommend you check out as many of them as you can. There's so many up and coming talented players here that you definitely should keep an eye on. Anyway, now we got insane amounts of roster news to get through, so let's get things started. First things first, let's start with the surprising one. Timeless have dropped their entire roster. And yes, this does come immediately after their win in the Face It League. Timeless has done this kind of thing before, usually because their roster gets bought out or gets picked apart. So I think there's nothing to worry about quite yet, but it will be interesting to see where these players end up going. Nightmare have given us more news. Yet again, Nightmare Rotation is back. This is, of course, the team made up of one tricks that it's basically the NA equivalent of Aw oh, Yeah. And there are some pretty interesting looking names here. We have Dirt, the Hog One Trick, Aquamarine, the Junkrat Legend, Plato, the Bastion player. It remains to be seen how good this team can perform in an actual competition. But you know what? As long as they can give us entertaining games, I'm here for it. Now, in another exciting roster, Avidity have announced that they'll be partnering with Rad Esport for OWCS State. Four. And this roster is actually really, really cool. We see Bun, Wisps, Nen, and Scuffed, all from Calling All Heroes fame. And like I said, these players have a lot of potential, so it's really good to see a team picking them up. But what I'm most excited about is the fact that Wub is officially back. It's time for Wub heads to rise up. This guy is back in the scene and no doubt ready to click some heads. We also have Pela and Twalls rounding it up on the tank roll. Overall, this roster might seem a little weaker than the top teams we have on paper. But again, play their cards right. I think these guys can give us some really close games and I'm really excited to see what they got up their sleeve. Now, in some unconfirmed news, a poster on Reddit shared this picture, which is supposedly a leaked Timeless and Citrus roster. Timeless, of course, having just dropped their team, maybe looking for a new one to pick up, Citrus would not be a bad shout. And especially as you've kept pieces like Kuffa and Lucmino, I think those are really good pieces that you can build around. And if this is what they plan on doing, we should be seeing an announcement soon. Either way, maybe something to get excited about. Next up, KSA has actually joined Space Station Gaming now. People will recognize his name from the Saudi Arabia World Cup team, where they were able to win first place, and he was a huge part of Twisted Mind's dominant era there in EU, where they were just winning game after game. He's going to be joining SSG, and I think this is actually a really, really good pickup. Hadi is an amazing player, but maybe doesn't have the most flexibility. So having KSA there, I think is going to be really good to kind of fill the holes that Hadi can't quite cover. Now moving back to Twisted Minds for a second, Vigilante has announced that he'll be temporarily leaving due to health issues. He'll be moving back to Korea, which does leave an open spot there on Twisted Minds in that flex support role. Which leads me to my next bit of news, which is Hypnos, who have dropped their entire team, including MCD. Hypnos, of course, saw some decent success in Stage 3, but it seems like they'll be moving in a different direction come Stage 4. But MCD has actually been rumored to be going to Twisted Minds, probably to replace Vigilante. It all lines up and it seems pretty probable as MCD has experience playing in EU now and he's been looking solid lately. So while he might not be quite on Vigilante's level, he should still be able to put up a good performance. Next, Team Peps, they have confirmed that they are still around. Following their division from Gaming Gladiators, they've officially announced their new roster and we got some great names on it. First, we got Crocs on the tank roll, who you may know from pulling out his Roadhog at the most opportune times possible in OWCS. And then on the DPS line, you have Stelios and Pac, who are two great up-and-comers. And of course, I'd be remiss to not mention that FD God is still sticking around. This guy is just a staple of French Overwatch, so it makes absolute sense that Team Peps would want to keep him. Overall, this roster has some really good parts, and I think they have the potential to go far if they can make sure they just play their cards correctly. Now, as for the rest of Gaming Gladiators, they've actually announced that they're going to be having their own roster for Stage 4 called Piece of Cake. This roster has the exact same tanks and DPS. We see Tread, Exodial, and Naga, but their support line has actually been changed up as it'll actually be Sile and Crispy coming in. Honestly, this roster should be really exciting. As Gaming Gladiators, they looked good, but they obviously had a couple issues. So this roster is basically the same with a couple changes made, and hopefully it's enough to actually amend the issues that they were having. Because like I've said so many times, when these guys peak, they look really Really, really good. So I think this is definitely a team that we'll want to see with some big punch-up potential there in EU. Now an announcement from Virtus Pro, they've announced that Smash will be officially rejoining them. Smash was their coach for EUC, which is when they really started looking like a top tier contender. So I think it's a really good sign that they're bringing him back. He led them to a lot of success and hopefully he continue to lead them to success, especially as they've really kind of locked themselves into that top three of EU. 
Next in Korea, Zeta Division have announced that they will be selling the legend himself, Pelican. Anyone who watched Overwatch League will be familiar with Pelican, and he was on M80 for a bit as well, if anyone remembers that team. Now, when Pelican left M80, there were rumors of retirement, but it's good to see he's sticking around, as he is no doubt still one of the best flex DPS out there. Him joining Zeta is actually pretty interesting, as he does have a pretty similar hero pool to Alfie. I imagine this is being done so they can cover double flex DPS if they want to do that. Either way, it's just going to be great to see him back in game again. And speaking of old legends, MN3 has announced that he's going to be looking for team. MN3 was of course Zest partner on Philadelphia Fusion and Soul Infernal, and at his peak he looked like one of the best hit scans in the world. So it's really cool to see him coming back. With so many teams having their rosters already kind of locked in, it still remains to be seen where he's going to end up. But make no mistake, he is definitely going to be able to find a spot, or at least he should. Anyway, that wraps us up on roster announcements. So let's Let's talk about what's coming up next. The Asia main event will be happening on September 27th, and the bracket has been set. We can see each non-Korean team has been paired with a Korean team. We'll have to see if any of them can make it past. I think Lazuli versus Pokerface is probably the best chance, but make no mistake, definitely an uphill battle. The lower bracket is where stuff is really going to get crazy, though. The Japan and Pacific teams should be able to have really good matches against each other. And once the Korean teams start battling amongst themselves, that also has the potential for banger matches. It's something we're not going to want to miss at all. And next up, though it's not happening quite yet, OWCS Stage 4 is on the horizon, and we've actually gotten a handy viewer's guide but published straight from Blizzard. I would definitely recommend checking this out, as it has a nice little recap of Stage 3, a bunch of key details about Stage 4, plus it tells you where to watch, co-streamers, and it tells you a little bit about what will be happening with the World Finals at DreamHack. Anyway, that about wraps things up. A lot of big culminations this week, but honestly, I think we're lucky that we had so many Grand Finals that were so good to watch. Even the ones that weren't as close still had some really high level gameplay, especially that Zeta Division versus Falcons game. Yeah, it was a 4-1, but man, that's some of the highest level gameplay we've seen. It is a brawl meta, which I know can turn a lot of people off, but if you can stomach it, you should absolutely go watch it. Plus, with all these roster changes that we see happening, I think the next few weeks are going to be really exciting. So yeah, do your best to try and make sure you can keep track of all of it, but if you can't, that's why I'll be here for you. Thank you all so much for watching, hope you enjoyed, I'll see you all next time, take care.